blessings beautiful people i hope you guys are doing good so um the lord gave me a word uh about a month ago and i've been procrastinating to bring it to you so he brought it up to me tonight so i, I said lord i'm gonna get up and do it so i'm up i'm doing it um so i'm reading from matthew 14 and 22 um and it says, then Jesus commanded his disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he sent the crowds away, uh, when he sent the crowds away, he went up into a mountain by himself to pray. So I know I'm jumping right into the text. Um, uh, so just to set the scene a little bit. Um, um, before Matthew uh, 14 and 22 um, above that, Jesus had just done the miracle of feeding uh, the 5,000 with the five loaves and the two fish. Um, so, you know, he and, and basically what happened, um, just to give you a little quick overview, um, there was a multitude of people and they had been with Jesus um, all day. Um, he had been teaching them um, and the disciples come to Jesus and are like, you know, the people are hungry, send them away. And Jesus says, um, no, if they're hungry, let's feed them. Um, to, to test the disciples and he tells them, um, give them to eat. And the disciple says, look, we, we don't have enough food to feed them. And if we go into the towns, it'll be way too much money to go and get meat to feed them. Um, and we don't have that kind of money to feed them. Uh, and then Jesus took what they had in their hand, which was, um, the five loaves and two fish. He took it, blessed it, um, lifted it up to heaven uh, unto God um, and was able to feed the 5,000 and had uh, extra food leftovers. And he had leftovers for him. Um, so um, he was able to do that. So before we we uh, get into the text, I know I started with uh, uh, right into the text. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick little synopsis of what is going on um, and why he sent away the crowd. Um, and, and the disciples, um, so that they can get to the other side. He himself goes off to pray. Um, I like that because it, it shows God's humanity that, um, he, that he was a hundred percent man and he, uh, he had just given so much to the people, um, that he needed to go up and get recharged, um, with God. Um, so going down to 23 it says when he sent the crowds away he went up into a mountain by himself to pray and when evening came he was there alone but the boat was now in the middle of the sea tossed by the waves uh, for the wind was turbulent during the fourth watch of the night jesus went to them saying walking on away jesus went to them walking on the sea but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. I love that because I've had times in my life where um, I'm, I'm in my place of safety, safety and I feel overwhelmed and, and fearful. I, I, if I could equate this to um, a personal experience, um, because how I envision it, and I'm a, a visual person, how I envision it is they're on this boat, they're in their place of safety. And then all of a sudden, as they're uh, in their place of safety, um, wind comes and um, it, it comes to kind of distract and disrupt what God is trying to do and their goal is to get to the other side and when it's coming so it's causing a little chaos and then they see Jesus coming and they be they get fearful because they didn't recognize him um I've had moments in my life where um I'm a, the perfect example I could give is um having a panic attack I'm on the way to school um one day and I'm driving um, so I'm in my car in my place of safety and like panic comes over me as the disciples in the wind. Um, and I feel like I'm like, I'm, I'm my place of safety that I'm in. I want to get out because 
I'm I'm panicking like oh my goodness I'm about to lose it and I'm fearful when I began I be in that moment I began to cry out to God just like the disciples in the scripture they cried out to God and as he spoke and he said to them don't be afraid to desire he spoke and he said to me listen I'm with you you calm down I, I'll never leave you nor forsake he began to remind me of his word um, and he began to talk to me um, that gave me so much peace and so much like that 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 moment that wind or that panic that came over me um, it was ease because I knew he was with me I knew he was there and because the disciples knew they were that he was there um they were no longer fearful but Peter goes on to say in 28 it says Peter answered him and said Lord if it is you bid me to come see you on the water he said come of course he's gonna say come it's Jesus he, it was him so come um, and when Peter got out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind, he was afraid and being beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? So when I was laying here and the Lord was giving this to me, what he was saying to me was, I, I'm, I'm wanting you, I'm wanting people, and I'm speaking to myself too because God is calling me to do some things, but I'm wanting you to step out of the boat and walk on water. See, our boat is our place of safety. It's our place of comfort. It's our place where we feel like nothing can get to us. It's, 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 this is my cool place where I'm just going to. And, and our place of safety could be anything. If, if God is calling you to do a business, your place of safety could be your job. And outside of your job could be that business. But in our place of safety, in our place of comfortableness, we may be fearful to walk on water. The, the water could be that business. It could be that, that restaurant. It could be that the clothing line. It could be uh, that store. Or uh, it could be whatever God is calling us to do. Our, our place of safety could be, I, I, the, or our water could be a book. God is calling us to write a book. And we're fearful because, man, God, I'm not a, I'm not a good writer. I don't know. I, I don't know about the resources. I don't know how, um, how I can do it. I, I, I don't know. And what I love about the text is, in 31, it says, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, thee of little faith, why did you doubt? What I love about that is immediately, Peter hadn't even sunk, but he began to sunk. And when he cried out to God, immediately he saved him. What I love about that is because Jesus caught him, he had to have parameters in place that will sustain Peter to be able to walk on the water or else Jesus wouldn't have called him to come. Let's prove that. Jude one twenty four. So because Jesus called him to come and walk on the water, Jesus had to have an ability that would sustain him and give him the ability or the strength to be able to walk on water. Jude 1 24 says now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with rejoicing. Listen, God is able to keep you from falling. So if Peter would have trust that because Jesus called him, he now had the ability to do what Jesus was calling him to do because Jesus called him. Jude one twenty four says, Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you blameless. Jesus is able. He is the now unto him. He is the him that is able to keep you from falling. So if God has called you out of your safe place, out of your boat to walk on water, he has an ability that will keep you. Okay, y'all don't believe what I'm saying. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24. Confirm a little bit more so that just get it concrete. And I ain't only speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself because there are some things that God is calling me to do. Um, and I, it's, it's, 
it's scary, but it's not my ability. It's in him to do it. Um, First Thessalonians 5 and 23, it says, <clears throat> May the very God of peace sanctify you completely. And I pray to God that you, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, who will also will do it. So understand, because he's called you, he's faithful to do it. He's faithful to do what? He's a faithful to preserve you. He's faithful to keep you. He's able, be faithful to prevent you from falling. To preserve something means you'll be established. It won't get stale. So if God is calling you out of the boat, Peter, to walk on water, to walk in faith on that business, on that book, to go back to school. Whatever he's calling you to do, he is faithful to keep you. He is faithful to preserve you. He is faithful to present you. He is faithful to keep you from failing. Know that he called you. So he has to provide a way to get you through it. Sometimes we think that we have to figure out all of the plans like god will call us to do something i know for me i do it god called me to do something so okay god i need tell me the plan like tell me everything that you everything and it doesn't work like that god doesn't tell us the totality of the plan but that does not mean we're not called when he called abraham he said listen i need you to get you and i'm paraphrasing uh, but this is how i envision he said listen hey Listen, listen, Abe, um, I need you to get thee out of your mother and father house and go to a land uh, that I'll show you. Like, not a land that you've seen or I've shown you, but a land that I'll show you. I need you to leave what you know. I need you to leave what you've used to and go to a land that I'm going to show you. I didn't give him the entire plan. He didn't give him the entire story. He just told him to get up and go. So sometimes God will not give us the entire story, but we have to trust that he is faithful. He is faithful to his word to do it. He is faithful. Look, he said, my word will not return unto me, boy, but it would accomplish what I've sent out for it to do. So if God has given you a word on what he's called, he's ordained you to do. He is faithful and just to fulfill it, to bring it to pass. And to accomplish it in you. So you have to know that if God is calling you to walk on water, to get you out of your place of safety, to start that business, to start that restaurant, to start that clothing line, to, to go to school, to, to go to nursing school, to go to hair school, whatever it is he's calling you to do, he will provide everything you need to do it. He'll provide the resources. He'll provide the people. He'll open the doors. He'll make the way. He just needs you to trust what he's doing. This is a partnership and a relationship and in a relationship. It's not one side. We have a part to do. We And our part may not be a big part. It may just be a small part. It may just be getting out of the boat. Getting out of the boat. And to some, that's a big thing to do. But it may just be doing the research. Finding out what it takes to start a business. It, it it may be, it, I don't know what it may be, but God does. And if you feel God tugging on your heart to do, to, to get out of your safe place, to get out of the boat and to walk on water, trust that he'll provide everything you need, everything you need, that there, there won't be anything that he won't provide uh, because he called you to do it. And if he called you, Oh, he's going to preserve you. He is faithful to do it. He is faithful to do all that he calls you to do. So I just wanted to come on and share what the Lord placed on my heart. Um, know that God has not given us a spirit of fear, um, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we have power, we have love, and we have a sound mind. Um, in our inability, in Jesus, we have an ability to do what seemingly is impossible. And uh, God would always provide a way 
uh, that we're safe. Um, the scripture confirms that um, so many times that um, he, 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 he's covering us and we're in his hand and he'll make a way. Um, so know that if he is tugging on your heart, if you feel God calling you to do something um, that seemingly is scary, trust him. When he says, come, come, go, he's calling you, go. And know that he will make a way for you to do what he calls you to do. Be blessed. I love you. Um, have a good night, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.